Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson, we'll be looking at how to create this slope glazing roof system here. And as you can see, it has all the required components. You have here a system of mullions with flush glazing panels on top, and also a rich object there as well. So, let's see how we can recreate this in the new Revit model. I'm going to close this one for now. And then we can open and start from this basic sample project. Let's go to 3D now. So, this is what we can start with. The intention is this. We can keep those rooms under the same roof anyway. But the corridor and the stair area there, we can give them a transparent slope glazing roof on top. To do so, I will first have to split this roof in two and keep one half solid and then turn the other half into a slope glazing system. Let's start right away. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard and then paste a line to the same place. That will give you two duplicating roofs at a moment. We can now cut one of them back to make space for the other one. Let's go to Architecture and choose Vertical Opening. Select this roof you want to cut and now we're going to start to sketch the opening on top of this roof. It will be easier to do from level 2 floor plan. So just very quickly, I will sketch out our opening for this item. So here is our opening sketch. As you can see, it's going to cut away the solid portion of the roof on top of our corridor and staircase and leave the other rooms on the left hand side still covered. Let's now click on Finish to complete this opening. If I now return to the 3D view, I can see this is the portion of the roof I want to keep solid. Let's now go ahead and make this one fit into the new space we want to give it. So again, I want to do a second vertical opening. Go to Architecture, Vertical Opening. Select the second roof now. And this time it's easier to sketch in 3D because we already have edges of the previous roof and this opening. I can now pick on this line there. Then I can of course finish the sketch as a simple closed loop like this. Okay, let's do finish to cut the second roof now. There are a few warnings coming up. Those are to do with walls underneath the roofs. Sometimes they cannot find a new attached target. Doesn't matter that much for now. So now I have two roofs that I wanted. The first one here I will keep solid. And the second one, let's turn this into a slope glazing system. We can now select it like this. Go to properties and change to use sloped glazing. You can see straight away it doesn't look so good. In reality, we wouldn't have this massive glazed panel going the entire length of the roof like this. On the other side there you have an equally big panel. This is just not going to work. So the first step now is to divide them into smaller panels. Just to make it easier I will isolate this roof now in this view. And we can go into edit type and start to define the rules you want to use for laying out our grid. So for grid 1 I can choose to have a fixed distance of maybe 1100 and the same for grid 2 at the moment both 1100 let's do apply and see our new grid that's much better already anyway before I start adding our mullions let's take a closer look at this panel here you can see now it's making kind of a weird L shape because the main portion of the panel is there but there's a small lack of it coming out this way. That shouldn't be a realistic condition you want to do on site. So let's get rid of that. To do so, we need to change the grid spacing to make sure the distance from here to here will be twice the spacing between two consecutive grid lines. To get a correct and accurate measurement, I can now go to the Modify tab and choose to make a dimension. Actually, before doing so, let me set a work plane first, so my dimension can have a good work plane to be based on. I can now choose pick a plane, 
and I just select any of the upper faces of those panels, maybe this one there. We can now go ahead and make an aligned dimension. Starting from this edge, going to here. That gives you about 2170 millimeters. I can now go back to selecting this grid system. Go to edit type again. And this time we want to change this value, 2170 divided by 2. Let's do a formula here to do that quickly. 2170 divided by 2. That gives you that value. Let's see how that works. Well, we did the change already, but that's actually happening for the other grid direction. Let's now copy this value and paste it for grid 2. That's getting much better now, but still I'm having a very thin ledge there. Let's keep reducing this value until that disappears. Let's take out a 5 mil there, in, in both directions. And there you have it. Now the cut appears to happen on the other panel down below, but that's a much easier condition to manage. Alright, it's time now to add in our emollients. We can now go to select this again, edit type, and this time specify our Molian types for grid 1 and grid 2. You can of course go as complex as you like with defining those Molians in terms of profiles and details. But for today, let's go simple. Let's use the default type we have in this project already. And I'm going to use that for both grid line directions. Press OK now to see them. And there you have it. They are quite a bit dark at the moment, so let me select one of them now and change the material to something lighter. Maybe something like this default material there. It's good for now. Next step is to put in missing mullions. You can see they're along the boundary. Some of them are not showing up. So let's now go to Architecture, Molian, and just press down the control key and click to place Molians on all of those free grid lines. We can do the same now for the second phase of the roof. Now I can notice one thing already. It's a bit tight down here because this final panel doesn't really have much room to grow. If I now reset the view, it looks like I should extend this anyway beyond the wall line, just so you can have as well an overhang of this glazed roof over the walls below it. Let's try and do just that now. I will undo the reset view mode so we can see this in resolution again. Select this roof there and choose to edit its profile. Now I can see all we have to do is extending this line down. That's really easy to do as well because we already have on screen now this temporary dimension. I can now click on that number there, and then just give it a bigger value, maybe 4800, and then press finish. There we go, much better now. I can now do the same to the other side. This panel looks fine, but we can go ahead and reset the view, see how it meets the wall below. Yeah, it needs an overhang as well. Let's now go and edit profile one more time. Click on this line and give it some more, th like 4800, just like on the other side. Alright, it's time now to make sure those two faces of our roof play well together. You can see now on this face, on the right hand side there, our curtain panel seems to be laid down from this top ridge line there. So you have on top a whole panel and then the system repeat that panels until it gets to the edge where a smaller panel can be put in. The opposite actually is happening on the other side. On this side on the left, the whole panel start to be placed down below here and then copy it onwards up the height of this roof and that's why you end up having a smaller panel on top. Let's try to make sure this left side of this roof here uses the same layout rule that we have for the right hand side. To change the roof layout on this single surface, I can just select this little panel icon there. That's for the modification of the grid layout. We can click on it. 
And now you can see the annotation of the grid layout rule on top of this single roof surface. If you look closely on this lower left corner there, that's where the justification point of the system is placed. This point is simply where the entire system is laid out. In other words, this is where the first whole panel will be put into the system and then repeated throughout. As we mentioned before, we want this whole panel to be on top of this surface. So now we can click on this arrow here to bring it up. Now we see the middle. I can now do this one more time to put it on top. And there you have it. A nice thing we have now already is that the grid lines on the two sides of this roof are now matching. You can see this grid there coming from below up to the top. It seems to match perfectly with this grid line on the right hand side there coming from the top down to the bottom. The reason is, in terms of horizontal direction, our first grid line was laid out from this point here. If I now switch to the other side, press escape to close this layout editing mode. And I can now select this roof again. The same icon appears on the other side as well as you can see. If I click on this, this is the point where the first whole panel and the first grid line are created on this surface on the right. It kind of starts from the same point here and that's why you have the grid lines on two surfaces matching perfectly like this. We didn't have to change anything to make this happen, but it's good to know why so you can apply the same principle and fix things in the future if they don't align automatically. Alright, it's time now to put in our rich element where those two surfaces join. You may be tempted to do this by using a corner mullion because after all, that's a mullion there, that's a mullion there as well. And it seems logical that you can use a corner mullion to join two curtain systems like this. However, I will show you what happens when we try that. So firstly, I can now select the mullions on this side along the same grid line. Unpin them and then delete them. We can now do the same on the other side. But instead of deleting them, we can just unpin and then try to change them to be a corner mullion type. I haven't got one to choose from here yet, so I have to go down to Families, Curtain Wall Mullions. As you can see, Quad Corner Mullion is there as a family, but it doesn't have a type yet. I can now right click there and make new type. Accept the default name for now. And then when I return to this and select my Mullions on the same grid line again, Quad Corner Mullion is there for me to select. I can now pick it. But it doesn't seem to do well in this situation. If you have a look around, it seems to have got a bit confused, so it doesn't know how to orient itself to the other two current systems. Upon even closer inspection, you can see there that this profile is even no longer rectangular anymore. So, the takeaway here is, we cannot use corner mullions for our rich element. Let me undo a few steps until we have our original mullions back again. Okay. To do the rich elements properly, you will need to do either an external family that you modeled external to the model and then load in and then placed here. Or in our case today, I will do it for speed and just create an in-place component for this purpose. Let's now create a reference plane we can use for that new in-place component. We can now go to one of the elevations, maybe the south one. Zoom in there, that's our glazed roof system. I can now draw just a horizontal reference plane like this. And name it Reach. Back to 3D now. It's time for me to go to Component, choose the model in place. And choose to make this under the roof category, this one there. Okay. We can now give it a name if you like. For now, I will just accept the default name. And the next step is to set our work plane. Set it to the one we just created, Rich. Okay. And now it's time for us to create the sweep to represent our Rich. We can now go Sketch Path. And I can just pick any horizontal line, really. But strangely enough, I don't have anything visible in the view at the moment. So let me go and reset the view just for a second. And now we can actually use this reach line over there. So click it to select. 
and now we just have to extend it all the way there to meet this gable wall. Let's do extend now. Tap a few times to get this vertical face of this wall and extend this line there. Next step, I will need to trim it back so it's going to stop where this other roof begins. So extend to there. Perfect. We can now click finish and move on to edit our profile. Again, you can try to create something along the line of an external profile family that you can then load into here and use straight away. But for now, again, just for speed, I will do something in place. So now I'm in profile editing mode. I can now start picking line to create my profile. Maybe this one there, this one here, this one, and this final one. Everything I selected has been projected onto this profile plane. I can now go to trim and make sure they form a nicely closed loop. That looks more like a trapezoid now. We can now click finish and then finish again. Finish the model now. And there you have it. That's a rich element you can use. You can make it as complex, as detailed as you like. But for now, that's the core principle. So, it looks like we have something usable. However, if you remember at the beginning, I showed the system where you have curtain panels placed on top of those mullions. At the moment, the panels are there, but they only fill into the space between mullions. They don't really come on top. Let's make them do so. I can now select this panel there, go to Edit Type, and it's the offset parameter here I need to change. Maybe try something like 50, just so we can know which way it's going to go when we increase this value. Apply now. That's good. It's going outside. We can now keep increasing this value until it completely gets out of the mullion space. All right. So now there are outside those panels that we have there. It's time now to adjust our rich element to accommodate this different style of curtain panels. Let's go to Edit in Place and click on Edit Sweep, select Profile, Edit it. I can now try to align the top two lines of my profile to the new surfaces of my curtain panels. So, this one go there. The other one goes here. Click on finish a few times, and there you have it, the second type of curtain system. Now to finish things off, we can try to extend those walls inside the building to meet this solid roof. Super easy to do as well, you just have to select the wall you want to extend, and then click on attach top base. Next step, select the item you want it to extend to meet, and it's done it. Let's do the same over here. Select, attach, and then pick a target. One more time here. That's a nice hat trick we made there. And finally, this system is now complete. If you like more videos like this every single day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice what you've learned, and I'll see you all in the next video.